Hi there, my name is John Vincible, and this is STEMWire, the weekly webcast bringing you the latest STEM-related news stories from around the world. First up, for all you science lovers out there, they've successfully used a 3D printer to print a bionic ear. The creators of the bionic ear are researchers from Princeton University, and the bionic ear actually hears better than human ears because it's capable of hearing frequencies far beyond the human hearing range. If you guys haven't heard, 3D printers have been used for all sorts of things lately, including a human kidney, the firing mechanism for guns, as well as a completely 3D printed handgun. Back to the bionic ear though, this is the first attempt to not only create a functional human organ, but to interweave it with electronics. Michael McAlpine is an assistant professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering at Princeton, and he said, in general, there are mechanical and thermal challenges with interfacing electronic materials with biological materials. McAlpine also cautions that these ears are just prototypes, they're not fully functional yet, and much more research is needed before they'll be implanted on a patient. Now, what do you guys think of this news? Personally, I think it's really cool. I can see us in 10, 20, maybe 30 years running around with electronic superheroes hearing crazy eyeballs, maybe Google Glass is just a stepping stone to a fully bionic eyeball. Let us know in the comments what you think, we love to hear it. Next up is news that Harvard engineers have successfully created small flying robots the size of insects and are planning to create small insect armies. Yes, this is the story. Harvard engineer Robert Wood has been trying for 12 years to create this small insect-sized flying robot. To manufacture a robot smaller than the size of a quarter, they've had all sorts of complications with aerodynamics and wing flapping and power, but they have successfully overcome these, and if you click the annotation that's on screen or the link below, you can see the demo video for yourself. The applications he cites for swarms of insect-like robots are hunting down missing people, spying on your enemies, pollinating crops, and even tracking toxic pollutants. That's right, science fiction fiction is becoming science fact, those small bugs you see flying around in 10 or 20 years could be robots spying on you. If you did watch the video, you may have noticed a small wire coming off of the insect-like flying robot, and that is to power it. They still don't have a mobile source of power small enough, you know, to sustain flight. A potential solution is to transfer power wirelessly to the robot insects, in which case his robot insect army would be complete. If you guys have an opinion on flying robot insects, be sure to let us know in the comments. Our next story is especially relevant for anyone living on the east coast of the United States, and that's that billions of kikatas are ready to emerge and fly around and mate and die. If you guys don't know what a kikata is, it's sometimes mistaken for a locust. It's a large flying bug that swarms. They aren't necessarily harmful to humans. They don't bite and sting in the traditional sense, but they can land on your arm, mistaking it for a tree branch and attempt to feed from it. The kikata has a very interesting life cycle in that it's born in tree branches and soon after hatching falls to the ground where it sucks on tree roots for 17 years. After the 17 years, they emerge from holes in the ground where they will blanket east coast skies, looking for mates, hatching their young and then dying. The male kikatas make a chirping sound to attract a mate which can be heard by a female from over a mile away. Researchers are estimating between 10 and 30 billion kikatas in this particular brood, so if you happen to live on the East Coast when they start flying around, you're definitely gonna notice. Our last story is for those of you in the market for a new laptop, either PC or Mac, and why this is not a good time to buy. The bottom line is that Intel's newest CPUs, called Haswell, are right around the corner and they're gonna be a marked improvement for laptops and tablets. The most noticeable improvement to laptops and tablets using new Haswell CPUs is gonna be drastically improved battery life. Intel has touted that new Ultrabooks running the Haswell chips will be able to last for up to 24 hours on a single charge. If you guys know anything about Ultrabooks and laptops, that's an extremely long time. Not only will you be able to use your device for much longer than current generation CPUs, the graphics performance will also be double that of last year's Ivy Bridge processors. If you don't really care about the latest and greatest generation of CPUs, you should still wait because when the new gen comes out, last gen models for PC and Mac will drop in price. I was particularly interested in this story because I am in the market for a new laptop, especially something powerful where where I can edit video on the go, so I'm definitely gonna wait for the fourth gen Haswell chips. Before we go, we're starting something new this week where I tell you a scientific fact that you may not know. Has there ever been a sound that just drives you absolutely crazy, whether that's someone typing on a keyboard, somebody eating, somebody's voice? If so, there's actually a name for that. Misophonia is technically the hatred of sound, and it's a decreased tolerance of certain sounds. It's believed to be a neurological disorder stemming from negative experiences only with certain sounds. This is actually different from another disorder called hyperacusis, which is oversensitivity to certain frequency ranges. Do you guys suffer from misophonia or maybe even hyperacusis? Let us know in the comments because it's very interesting. Otherwise, that's it this week for all the latest and greatest STEM-related news stories. My name is John Vincible, and I will see you guys next Friday for another episode of STEMWire.